Hi, it's Alex from Inside Gadgets, and today I'm going to show you how we can change the fuse bits on the ATtiny85 using the Arduino. In this demonstration, we'll be changing the fuse bit to enable the brownout detector. It's often a good idea to do if you're running from two AA batteries and you're writing to the EUP ROM and you need to access that data later on. So why is it a good idea to enable the brownout detector if you're writing to the EEP ROM? Well, firstly, you can actually corrupt the EEP ROM. So if you had any useful data, like you're logging, doing some logging in your project, that could be all corrupted. The next thing is actually the flash, where your actual program is stored, can also become corrupted. So I'll just show you where it actually says this in the data sheet itself. So it says preventing EMP ROM per corruption and it says do -do 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 -do, in periods of low VCC. So it can become corrupted because the power supply is too low for the CPU and PROM to operate properly. And for the flash, it's actually when you're doing self-programming of the flash that it can happen. So if you are using the ATtiny to um, basically write a new firmware to itself, that's when it can actually happen. So I've actually got the uh, PDF here for the ATtiny85 and it applies to the 45 and 25. So we actually can go over to the electrical characteristics and so the safe operating range for this one is 1.8 to 5.5 and the default out of the factory is actually 1 megahertz so it's 1.8 for 1 megahertz so we've got our two AA batteries and if each battery drops down to 0 0.9 volts that will be the minimum safe operating range for the AT Tiny so what the brownout detector does is once it detects that it's 1.8 volts or less it actually pulls reset to low and therefore disabling the chip from running. So just as an example we've got the AT Tiny 85 connected up to two AA batteries and they're at 1.86 volts and this is what happens if the brownout detector is disabled which is uh, how it is uh, by default when it comes out of the factory and so I'll just go ahead and connect it up and so the lights on and it's 1.83 and it's still going so it's still sort of in the safe still in the safe operating range but now once I connect up just these other LEDs just to take some of the power up we'll see what happens and so now we're operating out of the safe range and yet the, the light is still blinking so right now if we were writing anything to the EP ROM um, it's possible that it would be corrupted so let's go ahead and turn this off and we'll get started into how to change the fuse bits to enable the brownout detector so there's a nice website that does the fuse calculation for us and all we have to do is select here and choose the ATtiny85 and then it will load up all the default values and so right away we can see brown detection disabled and there's different options that we can also enable but let's just change this to 1.8 and now we just scroll down and here are the values we need to take note of so low is 62, high is DE, extended is FF now what we need to do is we'll go over to the Arduino uh, program files hardware ATtiny4585 and we actually need to find, modify our boards.txt file we actually need to add some more things here. 
so we'll go over to the Arduino folder for an example and you can see here they've got these five these seven uh, options the ones that we are concerned about are these three and then these two so I've already gone ahead and actually copied over the correct ones and you also need to change this, the little uh, board definition from you know to 80, uh, tiny 85 so let's go down to actually my modified file and we'll bring that open so here we can see that I've changed from the you know to 80, tiny 85 I'll just bring these side by side so you can see it and so it's 62 D F F and we'll check what it had here 62 D F F so that's right and you just need to change these unlock bits to F F and that means you're actually not going to be applying any values to those bits and we don't need to have the path or file because we're not actually putting in a bootloader so we close this off and we'll just need to copy this to and overwrite it and we'll just save that now if we open up boards.txt we'll have everything there all looks good and now we And we just need to hook up our Arduino to the ATtiny85 and use the Arduino as an ISP. If you haven't done that before, I actually have a video uh, that shows you how to actually do that and how to actually program using the Arduino as an ISP to the ATtiny85. So if you haven't done that, just uh, go ahead and click here and that will show you how to do it. So we now have the ATtiny85 hooked up to the Arduino and the Arduino already has the is already programmed as the ISP and so we'll hop over to the Arduino software and we just need to select the right board ATtiny85 and then the other thing required is just to burn the bootloader so and select Arduino as ISP so we in our boards.txt file you can see that we actually specified a bootloader so these fuses are written when the bootloader is written and so we'll just go back to this one and just go ahead and burn it and it's burning it and we'll just go down here the light just blinked real quickly and you can just ignore this warning here it's just this actual function, the read function for the locks for the bit locks don't doesn't actually exist so I can just ignore that and now you just need to actually re-upload your sketch so it's just a simple blinking light and we'll just upload that so if it was the first time you burnt the bootloader to the ATtiny85 the fuses would have actually said OK but for some reason for any other times you try it the fuses actually don't work the values you put in don't actually work so there's actually a way around that what we do is we in the Arduino folder we go into um, tools AVR and then we go into bin and we can do a command this to bring it up in the command prompt and I've actually got it already here uh, oops. and now what you need to type in is just what I've got here which I'll put in the notes below so it, the program is called AVR Dude, and this is the you're specifying the config file so this is back to the Arduino um, back to where you, uh, the config file is stored um, you're specifying that the uh, microcontroller is ATtiny85 uh, you're specifying that you're using the ST K500 
V1, like that's the kind of the in-circuit programmer, and uh, the B is the uh, bits per second, um, and P is the port, so mine is COM2, you can find that out by going to the Arduino and port, uh, serial port, and it'll show COM2, and then you put in um, the high, uh, minus V and it will actually give details about your ATtiny 85 so just make sure that you've all got it hooked up like you were about to program it and we'll go ahead and press enter on this and it just reads out the different um, different fuses we've got set but if we scroll up we can actually see some information about it so it's uh, the ATtiny 85 and just how much uh, the EPROM, how much bytes it is, the flash size, and all those sort of things. But if we can actually see here 62 DF and FF, those are actually the default values. So if we go back to the website and we actually just go back here, uh, we select disable scroll right down and we'll see that it's 62 DF and FF so the the bits we wrote in the bootloader didn't actually take effect so we've confirmed that the fuse bits we set aren't applied so now we actually need to we can actually just apply the bits we want and so we do that by basically just removing the minus V and typing in minus a capital U and this is the high fuse so we're only going to be setting this one because the others are unchanged so we can just set one fuse and this is DF and so if we look here DF is the default value so I believe for this one it's DE let's scroll down okay so it's DE so we'll go ahead and change that DF to an E and we'll double check looks good and we'll just hit enter and so what happens is it's just reading the value we put in okay so DE now it's writing it to the eighty tiny 85 then it's just verifying and it says it was verified successfully so now it's actually got the value DE so if we go back here to check everything it actually has DE so now we can actually test uh, the AT Tiny out with the brownout detection enabled so we've got the AT Tiny with the two AA batteries and it's reading 1.93 and we've enabled the brownout detection uh, we've enabled that fuse bit, so we'll just go ahead and plug in the AT Tiny, and we'll see the light blink a few times, and then it should drop off. So it's blinking. We'll just speed up the process by connecting the other LEDs to it. 0.88, 1.87. So connect the other LEDs, and it's already dropped off. So 1.82 it drops off. We can see the other LEDs are on, but it's dropped off. So that's uh, that's what we wanted to see. Excellent. So now it's gone back up to 1.86 and the light's blinking. I've just disconnected those ones, so it seems like it's all working as, uh, as planned. And so that's how you set the brownout detector. I hope you found this useful. And just remember, if you ever need to change it back to the default um, all you do is go back to your command prompt and just change uh, just change this one to a DF and just uh, program it and it'll just be back to normal thanks for watching